If one were to ask my bona fides as to why I'm an Eagles fan, I would say that as a young boy watching this play on Monday Night Football some seven, 800 miles away from where it took place, I saw it and I was hooked on Randall Cunningham and the Eagles. I remember when Donovan McNabb converted 4th and 26. I remember the Fog Bowl, even though I could barely see it. I remember the first Eagles jersey that I purchased and I brought it to Japan with me, Irving Fryer, and yes, on my wall, I still have my jersey of Donovan McNabb. Although I don't follow sports as much as I used to, I do understand the principle of a Fairweather fan and this is the embodiment of it. No Eagles fan in his right mind would go to a game in Dallas in his Eagles jersey and take off his Eagles jersey and put on a Dallas jersey because his team is losing. That is unforgivable. But it's the way that guys do sports because guys value loyalty. And if you don't believe in loyalty, look at Browns fans. Browns fans have long suffered through mediocre quarterback play and a variety of changes at the position. You could say the same for the Washington uh, Redskins commanders, are they? And same case, they've gone through a variety of quarterbacks, but the true fans, they stick it out to the end. We're never gonna make it to the World Series ever again. We're never gonna make it now. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I hate the goddamn Dodgers. Freddie Vivian can burn in hell. Sick with Pookie Pets. My theory as to why men are such loyal sports fans is because for men, when we start a new endeavor, we can't really go to a new city, go to a bar, bat our eyes, have some woman look at us and say, oh, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to let him stay with me and I'm going to help him out while he's in transition. We don't have that option. What men have is the option of a air mattress on the floor, a fold out table, a chair, a plug in socket for our Wi-Fi and our laptop or our television if it's that and grab something from the nearest supermarket or convenience store and boom new home is set up because for men our lives are in the journey just like the journey watching your team go from draft day to the promised land of a super bowl or whatever championship our lives are about the journey and so for us when we think about love of course we think about respect but the other thing we think about in love which activates our romantic senses is a woman that can be loyal to us while we're building something that has become all of a curse word in today's vernacular y'all people did not care about women being hypergamous until black women started to practice hypergamy and it sucks because we're the only race of women that have been taught struggle love or talk to build with a man or struggle in the name of love with a man or to get with a man even if he has nothing to offer you like like other races of women weren't taught that love is tested at the time of sacrifice when the person you claim to love is now going through the most difficult times of their lives do you still stand by them do you still look at their tears and wipe them off and say, I love you? I think it's something that has been conditioned, but I think it is now taking a turn from that. So I think it's something that was a norm. Um, look at our movies, right? We got Baby Boy. That's an example of struggle love. Mm -hmm. They want you to stick with it, stay in it, no matter how hard. No Struggling with something when they've lost their money, lost their job. Do you still stand by them? And do you still say, I love you? I am a hustling ass, like, I go to work. Would you five times your leg less than you? No. Hmm. You have to be making. I'm not gonna lie. You have to be making more than me. Like, oh wow. I'm not, because at the end of the day, I am a expensive female. Like when you are in love, when you are in love, the one that you love, you would do anything for them, right? Those who be in love know. You do anything for them, even if that means that you go through certain pain and certain difficulty, that you exhaust yourself and so on, right? Because you love that individual, you do anything for them. I'll have to ask Black Mind for his input on the people that I featured here, but clearly you can see that I'm not Muslim. But when you peruse through social media, it's very difficult to hear honest, open talk about loving people unconditionally in a way that's a romantic way, either through loving your God or loving your partner so that you can build some sort of relationship. What we hear in our media is very transactional and it's everywhere. And you know who's the loudest voice of all. If someone wants you to prove their love to them by struggling with them, lowering your standards, they don't love you. Most people would tell you 
you don't stay here with me because I'm just gonna bring you down. True love will let you go. Struggle love is selfish, okay? You're not doing well and they wanna drag you down with them. Understand that struggle love is a selfish love. Just like we have a lack of distinction for black men as all black men are Debbie baby daddies, they're all dusty, there's also a lack of distinction between what struggle love is for a guy who is trying to better himself and struggle love for guys that are doing these kinds Ladies, of things. Ladies, if a man ever asks you to struggle with him, if he asks you to borrow money, if you have to skip paying your car note to help him out and then get your credit back, you're in struggle love. If you're giving him money, if he's always begging and borrowing from other people, you're in struggle love. My thoughts on this topic actually originated from this TikTok, which is actually someone reacting to a reaction of a TikTok. And of course, it's about struggle love. Listen, if she leaves you at your lowest, bro. I promise I'm really trying to help you guys out. Like, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. Don't think that somebody that love means you need to struggle. You know what I heard? I heard a quote one time that said, when you love something, you take care of it. If you love your partner, how the f are you okay with your partner struggling with you? Yes! Oh my God! We won! We won! We won! Oh my God! I can't believe it! That's it! One reason I think struggle love is getting such a bad rap is because young ladies are choosing the wrong guys to struggle with. They're choosing guys that look good, that have swag, and not choosing guys based on their potential, their ability to work hard. In a way, what struggle love can look like is the life of my mentor here in Japan. He is someone who built a newspaper delivery business and he quit his day job to fund his own business out of his own pocket. And his wife was right there along with him, three o'clock, 3.30 in the morning, preparing papers while he's getting the bicycles and the motorcycles ready to deliver newspapers. She's right there bundling the papers with him. And that in today's vernacular is struggle of. And what happens when guys struggle alone? This obedient agreeableness that improves his quality of life can look like many things. But two of the most common ways of doing this historically are cooking and cleaning. Pushback I typically receive on this point is considerable and usually something along, along the lines of that is low value labor Orion. I'm not interested in being someone's maid or some man's mommy. The man I want can afford a maid. Let him. We hear this often. I'm the kind of woman that needs a man that's making 80,000, 100,000, 120,000. You hear it all the time on Kendra G. But if you're the guy, and this is what all men know, you're the guy who got it out the mud by yourself, you know what's coming next. And pays someone else if he wants his house clean. Fair enough. You have absolutely no moral obligation to cook or clean for a man. However, I'd like you to consider that if a man pays for that service, that is one less way in which he might need you. You can look at these tasks like oppressive servitude, or you can see them as opportunities to intimately integrate yourself into the man's lifestyle. Remember, the most dangerous man for a woman is the man who has everything you'll often hear sensational stories on the internet of young ladies who say that they tried to build with a man but he never got his act together he kept begging for money or even when he got his act together he left her for someone else and the question i would ask those young ladies is who is the elder man that you trust that you went to to vet that man looking at a dating profile and he's tall and good looking and handsome that's not vetting Finding the guy that all of your friends think is cute because he's tall and has riz, that's not vetting. And so one thing that's happening, in my opinion, is that a lot of women are trying to build with the wrong men. And just like people say that all black men are dusty, they say that, oh, all black men are not persons that you can build with. So make sure you're built before you come to me. What these young ladies are missing is that just like guys root for sports teams, if you're that fan that's rooting for the guy that's the Browns, when he wins his championship and you're a part of the reason, you're an integral reason why he won it, a good man will never forget that. And he will do things for you that he would not do for the woman that he met after he got to the finish line. 
That is the romantic part of love for men. A woman that sees the potential in him while he's building. The guy who's going to night school for an MBA while he's working his day job. The guy who's getting certifications while he's working his one or two, three, four part-time jobs. The guy who's working two or three jobs so that he can save money. That's the guy you're supposed to be building with. And if you're not building with those kinds of guys, you made this mistake, Miss Lady. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.